Okay, hello, my name is Corey Wall, and today I'm going to explain the concept of recursion and how it can be used to solve a classic game known as the Towers of Hanoi. The core definition of recursion is a method to solving a problem where the solution is dependent on solutions to smaller versions of the same problem. This approach is applicable in many areas of computer science. But let's get back to the Towers of Hanoi. This is a puzzle first publicized by a French mathematician by the name of Edward Lucas in 1883. It is based off of a legend concerning a temple where priests move 64 discs around attempting to complete this puzzle, at which time the world will end. Luckily for us, if this legend were true and they can move one disc per second, using the smallest number of moves, it would still take them about 585 billion years to finish. So I did the math, and unfortunately, finals are still going to happen this semester. Now, to explain the game, our goal is to move these discs, or I have blocks here, from, from column A to column C, and we can use column B as a parking space. Now, there are three, three main rules though. Only one disc can be moved at a time, and each move consists of taking the upper disc from one stack and placing it on top of another stack. So moving that to that. And the third and most important rule is that no disc may be placed on top of a smaller disc. So you cannot place a larger disc on top of a smaller disc. However, you can place a smaller disc on any size larger disc. So both of those are legal moves. Now, 64 discs is quite a few, and we don't want to be here for 585 billion years, so we're just going to start with the easiest number. We're just going to start with one block. Now, this is pretty trivial. Uh, our goal is to move it again from A to C, so we could just move block there, and we're done. That was pretty easy. Let's try something a little bit harder. Let's go with two. Now, with two blocks, we have two choices here. We can move block one to B or to C. Now, moving to C wouldn't get us very far, because that's where we want block 2 to be. So, let's move it to B, and then we'll move block 2 to C, and then move block 1 from B back to C on top of it. And now we're finished. So, that was pretty, that, so that, that, that was pretty simple. Now, let's try it with three blocks. Now, here we can move this block over here to C this to B, move this back on top, and now we can move this bottom block straight to C, this over here, block 2, back on top of C, block 1, on the top, and we're done. And this makes an important point. If the number of blocks for N is odd, as in the first case, or this third case, our first move is always to C. If the number of blocks is even, as in the second case, when we just had 2, our first move is to B. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. But another important thing is that when we solved the n equals 3 problem, we really just solved the n equals 2 problem by moving this here, this here, this after here. So that's, that's solving the n equals 2 problem with one step of moving a to c, and then solving the n equals 2 problem again on top of the last block. So we can just break that down further, and to solve n equals 4, really we'll just solve n equals 3 twice with an intermediate step of moving the fourth one from a to c. So let's try that for n equals 4. Now we have an even number, so our first move is going to be to b. So we'll just move this here. We'll make our only legal move there. Move that there. We'll move this here. Move this here. This on top of that. That. And that. And now we've spent seven moves, just like previously, to solve the n equals 3 problem. So we're halfway there. We just have to move this to there, and then solve the n equals 3 problem one more time. So we'll move that there, there, there. And now we're done. And that can be applied to any number of n. We'll just solve the previous version with an intermediate step of moving a block from a to c, and for any number of discs, if we had five discs, we could simplify it to just solving the problem for four discs, which we just did twice with one step in between. This is the power of recursion. I think we can agree that those priests in the Tower of Hanoi legend didn't graduate with a computer engineering degree from UAH, or the world would have ended by now.